Hello everyone, we will start a new topic today which is twist in ERNA. So, we will discuss different aspects related to ERNA twist, its importance, its effect and how to measure this twist and we will also try to see some uh, practical problems related to twist. Basically, the twist it is a measure of the spiralness of the fiber. Okay. So, twist is the measure of spiral turn given to yarn mainly basically it is a it is a staple yarn we talk about, but also in to some extent in filament yarn we need to apply some twist for different purposes, but for a staple fiber the twist is important otherwise we cannot actually the form the yarn. So, in order to hold the fibers for the staple yarn and in order to hold the threads for filament yarn or for the plied yarn okay. may be 2 ply 3 ply. So, that is the requirement of twist and this is primarily imparted to the staple yarn in order to hold the constituent fibers together okay. otherwise the there would not be any strength thus gives the strength of the yarn. Okay. Now, this is given during the spinning process of staple yarn. Now, let us see this is a delivery roller, this is a drafting arrangement of a ring frame and it is coming from say roving package. This is roving package, the roving is coming it is getting drafted and at the exit if we see the fiber strands are like this. This is a fiber very thin fiber strand with no twist that means we cannot form yarn this will be disintegrated after applying any force. Okay. This is with a zero force zero breaking strain. So, the this is not going to help. Although we have got the continuous strand of fibers, but we do not have any strength when there is nothing we can actually this will be held together. Now, here comes the requirement of twist. Now, twisting is nothing but to app impart some lateral force on the fibers and how do we do? We just rotate keeping one end not constant fixed we cannot say it is fixed in the sense it is not rotating one it is it may move laterally, but it is not rotating. If we if we impart if we rotate other end then this will impart certain twist and in this way the fibers in the outer surface will have to travel a longer path as compared to the fiber in the core or inner surface that means the tension is higher on outer surface fibers on the outer surface that means due to its high tension at the outer surface this outer fibers at the outer surface will impart inward force on the fibers inside that even 
the fibers in the next layer also impart force which will be less than this outer surface, but it still it will have certain inward force in this way this fibers will have some inward it will generate some inward force due to the longer path and tension generated on the fiber. So, this inward force what is it doing? This inward force increases the the fiber it is it acts as a normal force which increases the friction frictional. So, it will not allow the fiber to slide passed over another fiber. On the other hand in initial case there when there is no twist the fiber can easily slide passed over other fibers. So, this will actually lock the fiber and ultimately it will the develop certain strength. Okay. So, fiber will not slide over each other. Now, this is called the real twist. Now, another type of twist is there where suppose this is a strand, okay, this is a strand or say filament. Okay. Now, here at this end we are not twisting, this is fixed, and this end again we are not twisting, this is fixed. We are imparting twist at the center in between these two points. Now, what will happen here? Suppose A B and we are trying to rotate at the C. So, between A and C the direction of twist will be in one direction and in between C if it is say a uh, positive direction and in this side it will be negative direction. So, why I am telling it is a positive and negative I will come back this direction uh, the positive direction or negative direction this has got specific term which is called S twist S direction or Z direction or S this is Z. So, this is Z direction this will be this is S direction. So, this is actually it is not real twist because when it moves the end moves this will get automatically cancelled out and finally, the yarn will be a uh, 0 twisted and this is called false twist. So, this false twisting principle is used in many applications particularly for texturing for many other applications where we do not need real twist we know need intermittent intermediate twist for some specific purpose. Now, when this fiber strand in ring frame this fiber strand after say drafting it comes out so without any twist. So, we have to impart twist on this strand. Now, it is done by arrangement of it is a ring and traveler we are not discussing this here. So, this is a guide and it will go through this guide and there this is the called ring and it goes through the this is traveler and here it is a bobbin. Okay. So, bobbin and it goes to the so due to the and here the the spindle which rotates and with the help of the yarn pull this traveler rotates. So, due to the rotation of the traveler there will be twist imparted on the yarn strand and this twist is real twist because here it this at this end total bobbin total spindle is rotating. So, this is imparting real twist and here we can express this twist in terms of twist per unit length and how do it um, express here it is expressed in terms of basically it is a delivery rate if it is V say meter per minute 
okay. and its uh, rotation here this uh, rotation of the spindle it is uh, say n s r p m and if it is uh, rotating say it is a traveler n t r p m. So, then the one rotation of the traveler imparts one twist in the yarn. So, it will be basically the n t okay, by v, v delivery so v d. So, n t by v d is the actual twist imparted per unit length, but for all practical purposes. So, n t is actually it varies and the all practical purpose after unwinding from this package. So, it becomes it is a n s by v d. So, all these details we can learn in other course which is yarn manufacturing, but here the uh, application how to apply the twist in the staple yarn it has been explained here. And for other technique other spinning uh, processes the impart uh, the twisting pr principles are different, but for staple yarn twisting is must okay. and false twisting we have discussed. So, it is used for texturing for many other applications. So, now the effect effects of twist in the staple yarn. So, as the twist increases the lateral force holding the fibers together will increase that we have explained this lateral fold force will increase. So, the fibers contribution towards yarn strength will increase and that so that overall yarn strength will increase, but at the same time as the twist increases the angle that the fiber make the fibers make with the yarn yarn axis will increase. So, now suppose this is yarn now here it is a this is a fiber. Now, another yarn with a high twist now the when the load is applied on the yarn the contribution of fiber strength towards yarn strength will be if the it is theta that means, the component of fiber strength will be this is fiber strength. So, S fiber strength of fiber its contribution will be towards yarn strength will be cos theta that cos theta component will be on the yarn axis towards the yarn axis. Now, here it is cos theta 1 and same fiber cos theta 2. Now, theta 2 is more than theta 1 that means, for same fiber due to this obliquity effect the contribution of fiber strength towards yarn strength is low in this case. This is yarn A, yarn B so, yarn B as the cos theta is more theta is more. So, here cos theta component will be less. So, this total contribution towards the yarn strength will be less less in case of yarn B. Okay. So, this is yarn A it is a angle angle is less. So, its contribution will be more. So, that is how so, you will see here we have two different contributions. So, if we see if we measure so in x axis say amount of twist okay, or twist angle theta 
okay, or twist per inch, twist per length, twist per inch. So, in x axis and in y axis, if the yarn plot yarn strength in the yarn strength, we will have two components here. In one component, the due to the friction between fiber to fiber friction, the yarn strength increases. So, it will give us this value. So, with the increase in twist, this is the friction component. Okay. Another component is that due to as we have explained just now, with the increase in theta or twist, the contribution of fiber, fiber strength towards the yarn strength will continuously decreases. So, this is the point where the actually this is the uh, level of twist where these two curves are matching. Now, if we take the average, if we take the two of effect of the both the uh, factors, then we will see a curve like this. Okay. So, this is the nature of the curve twist versus strength that means, it is increasing initially due to the increase in fiber to fiber friction here it is dominating and in after that after reaching certain level of friction we do not uh, need any more friction because it has reached its optimum value. So, further increase in friction does not help it will not actually prevent any sliding because already fibers are locked then comes the obliquity effect which is due to this the strength of the yarn reduces. Okay. So, maximum uh, strength which occurs when they are oriented in the direction of applied force. So, ideally the maximum orientation for uh, filament yarn, so maximum strength will be with the zero twisted because all the fibers are oriented in that direction. So, towards that. So, this is the nature as we have discussed just now. So, initially it increases then after that this is called optimum twist, the twist at which the strength is maximum. Okay. The twist value required for maximum strength of the yarn is higher than the normal use. Since the increase in twist also has negative effect on the other important properties of yarn and fabric. Now, so this is the point this is the level of twist where the yarn strength is maximum. Now, we do not reach up to this point in all most of the practical purposes we do not reach up because we always deal with this zone. We set our twist level somewhere between this in this zone because as we increase twist in addition to the increase in strength, there are various negative effects which actually which affect the characteristics of fabric and yarn. Now, what are these effects? Now, let us discuss in detail. Before that, so in continuous uh, filament as I have mentioned, a small amount of twist is required. So, in continuous filament if we see the nature for this is for staple yarn. Now, for continuous yarn if we see that the effect of obliquity effect it is it reduces continuously, but initially when the filaments are parallel. So, that is the zero twisted case and when little bit twist is applied initially there will be a frictional assistance. So, that will increase the twist little, uh, strength little bit. So, that is why the effective nature of the curve is like this initially there will be small increase little increase then 
it will drop. So that's what is the case in the case of the continuous filament. So it is important to keep the filaments together. That's how we don't use the multi-filament of zero twisted because it will create problem in next process like weaving, knitting, and so to keep the continuous filament together, we have individual filament together. We impart certain uh, twist. So as the twist increases, the yarn st strength decreases below its maximum value at zero twist level. That will keep on increase, but because of the variability of individual filament strength. So, if we impart little bit twist, so it will average out. Okay. So, initial effect of twist is to support the weaker filament, otherwise the weaker filament will immediately break. So, to support and to enhance little bit frictional contact, so that twist is imparted. So, the nature is that it it initially little bit flat then it reduces. Okay. Now, the twist of the yarns are of two types one is S twist and another is Z twist. This is actually it is easily one can identify it, identify based on the type of the alignment of the fiber. Okay in the surface the if the fiber alignment is in this fashion. So, it is it forms a S type fashion then it is called S twist if it forms the Z type at alignment then it is called Z twist. There are two different types of S twist, uh, twist S twist and Z twist and this direction twist direction this has got great impact on the uh, various effects uh, on the fabric. So, the effects are first effect of twist is the fabric handle. Okay. Now, as the twist level in the yarn is increased, it becomes more compact, okay. it becomes hard, it, the yarn becomes hard. Okay. The fibers are held together, so giving harder feeling of yarn. So, if we want soft feel, soft touch, so we sh must go for a low twisted yarn. Okay. A fabric made of high twisted yarn will therefore feel harder okay. and it will be thinner because high twisted means the diameter of yarn will be less. A fabric produced from a low twist yarn will have soft handle. Okay. But at the same time, it will be weaker. So that is how the problem is that the with the soft twisted yarn. So if we want, if we want a fabric with soft twisted, soft uh, handle, so we must apply less twist. So it is it will give us the uh, highly soft fabric, okay. but if we increase the level of twist, the diameter will reduce and this will give the hard feeling, because the yarn is not compactness of the yarn, it is not compressible yarn, this yarn is compressible because of the less twist, but the main problem with the this uh, uh, type of yarn is that as this is uh, the almost open structure this is softer one the fibers whatever fibers are protruding this fiber will be easy will easily come out. So, this may result hairiness and also this fiber will tend to have uh, tend to roll down and gradually as this fibers are not firmly gripped inside this fiber will gradually come out from the structure and then um, the hairiness the peel these are called peel peels will become larger and larger gradually due to the the use due, due to the movement due to the force applied. 
So, suppose if we apply force here there will be a rolling action on of the fiber and this will tend to pull the other end of the fiber other end of and this the peel size of the peel will gradually increase and this is actually very prominent this phenomenon is prominent for low twisted yarn. But in case of the high twisted yarn as the yarn structure is very compact this would not allow the yarn fiber to come out easily this way. So, that this will not result the peeling. So, that that is why the peeling tendency is more in case of low twisted yarn and also the abrasion. So, the uh, the low twisted yarn fabric made of low twisted yarn it is uh, the fibers easily come out from the surface or from the inside the fiber okay, fabric. So, that is how it is a it will result the weaker abrasion resistance it is abrasion resistance will be poor. And if we talk about the moisture absorption the high twisted fiber actually yarn the holds the fibers tightly and it does not allow the moisture that moist it does not allow the moisture to penetrate inside the structure. So, restrict water to enter inside. So, it is moisture absorption is low. So, if we want to enhance the moisture absorption we must use a, a fabric made of low twisted yarn. So, high twist in the yarn is used when a high degree of water repellency is required. So, there are various applications like gabardine fabric is one example when where we use high twisted yarn. So, that means it will give us the water repellency type finish sometime like in um, uh, umbrella uh, fabric if we use the high twisted yarn. So, it would allow the water particle to come inside the fabric. So, that is how. So, water repellency it characteristics also controlled by the twist and low twisted yarn is used where absorbance is required like wipes. If when we use a fabric uh, for wipes we will use low twisted yarn. So, by controlling the twist, twist uh, we can control the absorption capacity for a same fiber. Now, wearing property means how the fabric gets wear out. Okay. Now, with the increase in twist level the wearing property like abrasion and peeling as I have just mentioned are improved. So, if abrasion resistance or resistance or peeling characteristics we have to improve then we must use a fabric made of high twisted yarn. High level of twist help to resist the abrasion as the fibers can, cannot come out easily okay. and the same effect also help preventing peeling that I have just mentioned. Okay. So, it, it starts from entanglement small entanglement and gradually the entanglement gets bigger and bigger due to pulling out of the fiber from the structure yarn structure okay. it gets rolled. Next characteristics is the aesthetic property. Now, aesthetic property it is one of the aesthetic properties is that it is a shining means okay. the level of twist in yarn alters the appearance both in both by changing the thickness or by light reflection. So, the fabric with uh, low twisted yarn will have uniform reflection whereas, in case of the high twisted yarn that will start reflecting the yarn with uh, the reflecting the light of uh, that it will scatter the light like a fabric made of say zero twisted yarn. And another fabric is made of say high twisted yarn this will actually reflect light uniform reflection will be there. So, that will give the shining nature 
but here this will with as high twist that will start scattering the light at different angle. So, this will result the dull nature of the light. So, this is actually this we can get uh, we observe here if we use a fabric made of filament without twist twistless filament and another fabric from the same filament, but twisted filament twisted filament fabric will give dull look and that without twist twistless filament fabric will give a shiny nature. And this effect we can observe also fabric made of compact yarn or another is normal yarn. Compact yarn main advantage is that in compact yarn as there is no hairiness and fibers are parallel okay, and the, so most almost aligned. So, compact yarn we impart less twist. So, as it is um, uh, less twist is, is imparted, so it results shining less. So, compact spun yarn is uh, actually uh, shining uh, it is more the aesthetic characteristics is better. So, better light reflecting properties and also different patterns can be produced in the fabric by using similar yarn, but at different twist level. Like if we have a say pattern say stripe of say different twist, then we can generate different pattern. Now, we can see Suppose we have two yarns, two types of yarn. Say four yarns of say this is red is high twisted. This is higher high twisted yarn, and blue is say low twisted. So, this will high twisted and low twisted and light will get reflected and different way. And if we design if we same yarn with the different twist will give very nice shadow effect. This type of arrangement this type of effect we can also get by having say this this is say S twisted, so few S twisted yarn four say S twisted yarn is placed in the stripe and four another four yarn of say Z twisted. So, this stripe will give a light reflection in different way than this stripe. This is called twist shadow effect okay. and this is very actually popular it is um, widely used in worsted shooting, worsted shooting. The shadow stripe can be produced by weaving alternate bands of S and Z twisted yarn. Level of twist can also be used to enhance or subdue the twist effect, twill effect. So, if we have say jet twill fabric and if we use jet twisted yarn, then it will give a enhanced jet twill effect. Similarly, for S twill, so if we use S twisted, okay. So, that is how we can actually enhance the effect aesthetic effect of a particular fabric. Now, cover factor and transmission characteristics transmission means air moisture or thermal heat transmission. So, as twist increases diameter of yarn decreases and because 
the diameter decreases keeping everything constant. So, its covering power will reduce. So, there will be more higher more and more pores and that will result the higher air transmission. So, that means air permeability increases with increase in twist and transmission characteristics it affects. So, air and moisture vapor permeability increases and it also affects the wicking characteristics, because the with the increase in twist the wicking that means transmission of liquid decreases, because the fiber the, the water has to travel a longer path. This is yarn suppose fibers are parallel and during wicking the water will actually transmit along the capillary, but once there are twist high level of twist is there the water has to travel along the the curved path ok helical path. So, the wickability the wicking speed gets reduced ok and thermal transmission. So, as the twist increases the entrapped air inside the structure reduces. So, thermal insulation effectively reduces with the increase in twist ok. So, we, uh, we have seen that if we actually can incorporate entrapped air inside the structure. So, if we uh, for thermal insulating cloth we must use low twisted air. Now, there are few practical application where we use high twisted air and to get certain specific nature specific characteristics of fabric like here we will give two examples which are very commonly used one is georgette and another is chiffon. Both of them are having high twisted filament here made of filament normally it is a z and s twisted in x axis a warp and weft ok and chiffon has got uh, having little bit higher twist it is almost double ok here, but these two types of fabrics are actually known for the high twisted yarn ok. And twist shadow effect as I have mentioned in oat state shooting is there. Now, georgette coming to the georgette and chiffon if we see here this is georgette fabric it consists of high twist continuous yarn in both warp and weft having small crepe type of structure on the on surface. This is georgette high twisted and chiffon it consists of warp and weft that it is again continuous filament high twisted huh. and it is called waru in Japanese ok, maybe it is a in that that is the term they use. Okay. Now, if we see the term it is Koshi in Kawabata evaluation tester where it is a stiffness, stiffness of fabric. Now, here what we have compared with the fabric without twist like taffeta is the fabric is made of continuous filament ok without twist. Now, here if we see that with the effect of twist the georgette and chiffon has got much lower stiffness than 
the taffeta which is made of the twist let us say that means the twist has got its effect by changing the twist level we can change in we can actually control the stiffness of fabric. If we want lower stiffness of fabric limpy fabric we must go for the higher twist state. So, if we increase the twist the fabric becomes limp. Similarly, if we want crispness uh, some filling which is crispness filling in that case we have to go for high twist state. If we can see the uh, georgette fabric or chiffon they have they are having very high crispness. So, that so the fabric handle or fabric feel can be controlled by changing the level of twist. Okay. Now, we have discussed the bending rigidity you can see here the bending rigidity here it is a much lower than the the uh, twistless uh, filament. Flexibility, flexibility also increases it is more flexible. So, if we want high flexibility then we must go for higher twisted yarn, but flexibility in the sense of bending of the yarn it is not the in the sense of other thing. Okay. So, it is a flexibility the bending characteristics we can improve. Now, coming to the most important characteristic which is the level of twist, how to actually express the level of twist. Typically, it is very simple, it is a term it shows it is a very simple term. Level of twist means you measure the twist in uh, per unit length okay, that is ok. So, the level of twist is usually expressed as the number of turns per unit length that is twist per meter or twist per inch or twist per centimeter, but it is not the end of the story it is actually twist per meter if we express it is not telling everything. So, there are something else so, however, the ideal amount of twist varies with the yarn diameter. Now, the, the, the term came yarn diameter then it is making the things complex. So, for different yarn diameter if we impart same twist then we will not give the same effect. Okay. The thinner the yarn the get greater is the amount of twist that has to be inserted to give the same twist effect same effect what is the effect same effect. Now, the effect here is that we want the effect which is the same feel same touch same hardness of the yarn and that is actually that is something else that, that by, by imparting same twist we cannot achieve the same effect. Here uh, the yarns are if the yarns are of same different diameter though so we cannot impart the same twist T p i or T p m to get the same effect. So, we have to impart different different twist per unit length different level of twist. So, that the factor that determines the effectiveness of the twist is the angle of twist. So, we must keep the twist angle constant, so that we can get the same effect. So, it is not the twist per unit length, it is the angle twist angle of yarn twist angle of fiber in the yarn that controls the effect there that controls the all the effect it is not the only the strength only the hardness it controls everything it controls the the shining nature it controls the fabric handle everything. Okay. So, this is the twist angle, but main problem of twist angle is that it is very difficult to measure the simplest way of measurement is the twist per unit length. Okay. 
So, if we can measure the twist per unit length which is measurable and if we know the diameter of yarn then we can get idea about the twist angle. Okay. Now, we will see we should very carefully we can observe here this is one the yarn of diameter d let us con and consider yarn as a circular cross section okay, of diameter d and here the this red color it is a, a fiber okay, one fiber here it is a wrapped around that it is a surface fiber. Now, this is yarn of diameter d and one fiber has got has taken turn of one one full turn it has taken that means it has twisted once now this length suppose it's a l length now once it is twisted this is one now if it is if the twist per unit length is t as we have mentioned t p m or t p i this is the t one okay now that means for one twist this length will be 1 by t if that is nothing but l okay now this if the diameter is d so it's let us take its capital d and this if it is a circular in cross section yarn is circular in cross section now imagine we are now just opening up this portion. So, we are making it flat it is opening. This is the situation here. So, this length this width become pi d and this fiber this fiber which has made which is actually angle of twist if it is theta if we totally open then it will become this angle will become theta. Okay. This is the twist angle. Now, if we want to measure that the twist angle theta. So, here tan theta will be pi d by L okay. and 1 by L equal to T. So, we can write pi d t. t is the twist per unit length. Okay. Now, so the fiber makes an angle theta with the yarn axis. Okay. Now, here tan theta equal to pi d by L. So, at, at effectively it is pi d t. Now, the tan theta is proportional to the d diameter of yarn and turns per unit length t as I have already uh, mentioned. So, in the indirect system, indirect system of yarn count the diameter is inversely proportional to the under root of yarn count. So, tan theta is proportional to turns per unit length divided by under root of count. So, tan theta pi d t and t is the twist per unit length theta is the twist angle. Now, the t twist per unit length from earlier one. So, d tan theta equal to pi d in multiplied by t, t is twist per unit length. 
d is the diameter of here. So, t what, what is that? It is a 1 by constant under root c. Okay. Now, here if we see the tan theta equal tan theta t equal to tan theta by pi d from there we are getting one parameter this parameter which is exactly it is a constant parameter. This is the parameter which is constant parameter and this we can see here actually here it will be c by c is the c by under root n ok this c will be this is there will be c by under root n it will be the, so effectively we are, this is the total c tan theta by pi this is total constant ok this constant is known as the twist multiplier this is the constant that means the twist multiplier k it is nothing but c is a constant factor pi is constant factor and theta that means twist multiplier it is a proportional to the tan theta, tan theta. If we can measure the angle then we can calculate the value of theta k value and as the tan theta the theta cannot be measured easily. So, we can get the this k value indirectly by measuring the the yarn twist level and yarn count. So, the general formula is that T in the indirect system the twist per unit length equal to the twist multiplier by multiplied by under root count. Now, now the implication of twist multiplier now what we have seen T equal to k under root n that means, T p i equal to k is nothing but twist multiplier under root n in English count. This is the indirect system of measurement. Now, here the thing is that if we want to use the finer count want to produce finer count. Suppose, we are producing one yarn of 16 count 16 any another is say 25 any another is say 36 any like this we are producing 3 count this is coarser medium and finer count and we are imparting the same twist same twist say say 20 twist 20 twist per twist per inch we are imparting in that case the yarn 1 yarn 2 yarn 3 in the yarn 1 what are we getting 20 T m under root 16 that means, T m will be 20 by 4 5 T m for say 25 count yarn we are imparting the same level of twist same T p i T p i of 20. So, for 25 count yarn what will be the T m value T m 1. So, T m 2 will be 20 by under root 25. So, it will become say 4 T m becomes 4. Now, for say 36 count T m 3 will be 20 by 6 it will be somewhere around 3 point something 3 point so, as we have seen here keeping the twist level same if we increase the if we make the yarn finer and finer then we are getting lower and lower T m. What does it means? What does it mean T m? These are that means, we are getting the yarn that fiber angle twist angle it is gradually reducing. So, for same twist for same twist level imparted same twist per unit length imparted if we produce 
the finer count the angle of twist will reduce and that angle of twist reduction means yarn becomes softer and softer and the softness of yarn is reflected by twist multiplier. That means, twist multiplier is a parameter which actually reflects the hardness of the material hard hand of the material. It does not give idea about the twist per unit length until and unless we know the count of the yarn. So, if we know the count and twist multiplier then we can get the twist per inch, but twist multiplier concept is entirely different from the twist per unit length. Twist per unit length gives it is a physical measuring characteristics, it is a physical parameter which can be measured in yard which can be measured, but the twist multiplier it is gives the inner feel of the yarn okay what is there inside the yarn and that indirectly reflect the twist angle okay so that's why twist concept of twist multiplier is extremely important and uh, this is the, the way we can uh, calculate so we cannot calculate tan theta we don't have the idea of the c value constant value for yarn so we uh, can we indirectly can, uh, can calculate with the measurable uh, parameter which can be easily measured the twist per unit length we can be measured and the yarn count can be measured. So, twist so we can get idea of twist multiplier. So, so we, what we have discussed till now it is a indirect method indirect twist multiplier is it is a the in in direct twist multiplier it is a k equal to T p m multiplied by twist okay. and in indirect we have mentioned k equal to T p i by cotton count. So, in that way we can get the twist multiplier and which is the idea of twist angle. Okay. So, twist factor is defined as the twist per unit length divided by yarn count that is the in indirect system and direct system it is a twist per meter or twist per centimeter and yarn takes. Now, if we want to know now see for direct system what we have seen the twist multi text twist multiplier is the it is called text twist multiplier twist say twist factor say or constant it is called it is k it is nothing but twist per T p c m and multiplied by under root takes. So, the unit unit of twist multiplier in direct system will be T p c m multiplied by takes to the power half. This is the unit we use for direct twist multiplier. So, for direct count it is there twist per centimeter equal to twist factor divided by twist the under root n t. Okay. So, the unit of twist factor is T p c m multiplied by takes to the power half. Takes to. So, that is the okay. now we will stop here and related to this uh, all this uh, twist multiplier and twist factor we will see different numericals in next class till then thank you.